Lita. Gerald. It's, good to be here. <laughs> it's good to be here with you. These guys are starring in the blue and the gray coming up on CBS, one of CBS's big financial undertaking, the entire story of the Civil War. It's Bruce Catton's novel, of course, brought to real life. Malachi, <laughs> Brian Kerwin is his name, mm -hmm. Gerald O'Loughlin. What's the way you use the word undertaking there? Undertaking? Yes. I get killed. I know it, and it's very sad. Yes. But you know what he has to do? He has to take young boys like this gentleman, who are kind of a little, little fear to go into battle there, and turn them into soldiers. Yeah. You do a good job. Not with me, you don't. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> but in the Civil War, the, the NCOs, the sergeant, weren't the macho uh, kind of know-it-all people that we are used to seeing on the screen. Everybody sort of didn't quite know what they were doing. So, uh, was there that kind? Do you think that kind of camaraderie of the 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 Union line and and the Rebs, where they actually would stop the war for a while and and pass gifts back and yeah, forth? Do you yeah. think that? I mean, was that really a part Absolutely. of it? Absolutely, it did. Yeah, it's a fictional uh, work of art, but it's based on real things that happened during the Civil War. There's a barn dance where they invited them from the other side. They're swimming on one side and yelling on it. Those things all happen. Yeah, most of our knowledge of wars that, that American soldiers have been in is with, <clears throat> with foreigners and everything. It's, um, you can imagine, in, you were fighting against just other Americans, people who were just from the mm -hmm. state next door to you. And, you know, I, I think it would be very easy to stop the war for a while and have a good time with each other. Brian had one of the most difficult kind of roles to play because he wasn't the big macho hero. Mm. He's the kind of guy who goes into battle and he wets his pants. <laughs> <laughs> his gun doesn't fire. Yeah. I mean, and that's. How, w w would you have rather played the kind of part where you come out as no, a hero? No, really? As a matter of fact, it was it was the uh, the desertion scenes that that fascinated me so much about the script. I had um, plans of either doing a play at that time in Los Angeles or uh, the Blue and the Gray. And when I finally saw the desertion scene, I went, "This could be fun." And it turned out to be a lot of fun <laughs> because it does take a turn. It starts out with Malachi being uh, quite the the macho, uh, go out and kill those revs, and I want the war to start. And, and it's only when the bullets start flying that mm -mm, mm -hmm. he doesn't like it at all. Well, it's filled. Mm. The whole the cast is filled, sprinkled with cameo parts by some of the biggies. One of whom is is Geraldine Page. You you were in something with her, weren't you? Yes, something for Joey. Yes. Oh, John Capaletti yes. and his brother. <coughs> She's so mo most unusual, uh, she remarkable. Sure you smiled. You, you, you're, you're thinking of something. No, no. I, I have the same feeling. Uh, she has a mercurial kind of a talent. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I would say Kim Stanley and Geraldine Page are the two top, mm -hmm. certainly female talents in my generation. You know, I mean, Marlon Brando would be the top mm -hmm. uh, male. I mean, mm -hmm. she is. She just has a dimension that defies definition. You could call it spiritual or something. It just goes mm -hmm. up. Well, it's a little off the wall. It's a little off beat. It's like the, the tempo. It's not that it's not right. It's just the tempo is different. She marches to the tune of a different drummer, perhaps. She's a very unique personality. Yeah. I think she builds a character from the toes mm -hmm. up. What, what did you learn from this experience, Gerald? I don't know. Uh, had just an awfully good time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I learned that work, the product, can be excellent under those conditions. You know, that's not always what we artists conceive as the way to do it. You should suffer a lot, you know, maybe, and the product will be better. There's that school of thought, but. Uh, okay, now you say under those conditions. What do you mean? Time? No. In other words, there's a, a theory that if, if the conditions are a little harsh and you suffer a, a great deal, the product will be much better. So no. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Pain. You have to suffer yeah, for your yeah. art, well, for an artiste. In this case, that didn't seem to be uh, applied. It was a piece of cake. It was, it was just a lot of fun. It yeah. was being yeah. involved in something that was a lot of fun. Now, you're new to this in the sense that you don't mm. have the background yeah. and experience that he has. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what did you get from this? Um, the same thing. It was a dream group to work with. Um, uh, what did I get from I learned most of my television experience had been uh, a not quite 
first-rate finished product. I have when I'm involved in a lot of crummy work. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I was just uh, so pleased to know that, that uh, in the same time and amount of money uh, that is spent for any television production, if you uh, put the effort into it in casting and directing it and production values, you can come out with quite a fine product. There's nothing to keep you from doing it. I love that when he says, I've been involved in a lot of crummy yeah. work. And he's so <laughs> For a while, young. I was I was doing guest shots on Episodics when I first started. Any show I got on was canceled immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did the first episode of David Cassidy, Man Undercover, <laughs> uh, American Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Flush twice for that one. <laughs> You're the kiss of death? <laughs> yeah, right. I it's just like, I have never voted for a president of the United States who's ever won. No. <laughs> and so my support of a candidate is his death now. Yeah. I mean, as soon as he gets it, yeah. he loses too. <laughs> <laughs> have you been in some real losers? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. In fact, I, I closed Charlie's Angel. <laughs> I closed it after <laughs> many successful years. I made the mistake of getting it. <laughs> oh, well, it, it is an awesome undertaking, and it's coming up on the network, on the CBS network, November the 14th. It skips Monday night, and then we'll go <coughs> Tuesday night and Wednesday night. It's three hours long, so plan no, your three schedules. Three hours, two hours, three hours. Oh, three hours, two hours, three hours. Yeah. Oh. Total of eight. Okay, well, plan your schedules accordingly because you don't want to miss the Civil War. Yeah. It's happening right here on 1011 Strong. Hey, Brian, nice to meet you. Thank you. And welcome to Nebraska, Gerald. Leda. 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 <laughs> We're going to do it until I we get it right. I live in Arleta, California. Arleta, how do they spell it? A R L E T A. Well, you got Arleta, part California. of it right. L E T A. You got it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And who's going to win the Civil War? Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's the we message. can't tell the okay. ending. We can't tell. All right. That's You'll have to watch it if you want to find out who wins the Civil War. But the South may rise again. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And we'll be back as 1011 Morning continues.